I'll tell you why I'm happy about this booth. Um, one, it's it's so cool. Oh, and, he, and he put you in the center of the conference as well. That like, too, you know? like the visibility <laughs> is amazing. Uh, actually, when we were thinking about doing this for the first time, we wanted to do it downstairs next to the main stage. And I thought, no, no, here's the best place to put it. What about we put it on the main stage? So like people, yeah, they are <laughs> having talks and so on. And, and people doing podcasts on the side. You're like podcasting on the side. So people get out of the stage and get immediately in the, in the podcast booth. I'm here with Jérôme de Tichet, who is the president of Ethereum France. That's right. And the organizer uh, of this conference. And so I wanted to get you in here uh, for a number of reasons. One, to talk about this conference. Uh, it's the third uh, edition of ETC. Yep. Uh, it, it's like it took proportions this year that uh, far uh, out just out blew everything that you've done previously which is really interesting thank you um and uh you know in in this venue but also uh there's the vc track i was speaking with om earlier and she was telling me about that and um also to talk about so the 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 ecosystem in general sure um some trends that you're seeing and maybe we can bring it back to the french ecosystem and uh, some of the things that you know you're involved in absolutely so, um, tell us tell us about this conference and a bit of the history behind it and uh, yeah, how you wow. got here. Pleasure. So, um, Ethereum France is a non-profit. Like we've been uh, active since late 2015, um, mainly trying to, you know, like organize the Ethereum ecosystem in France. Like back in the days, it was just uh, a couple of people, or some doing mining. I was doing mining, and some coming back from the US, learning about a little bit of a smart contract. Some slightly involved with the protocol like just first sharing uh, and we started after this uh, Ethereum France website and we started to produce content translate technical uh, papers and so on and it all really started after DEFCON 2 in Shanghai uh, where we met with the foundation they Vitalik speak a little bit French so like it helped um, I've never se heard him speak French but I well guess he yeah <laughs> uh, he, he has little to no accent actually really so, yeah interesting so impressive well he speaks so many language so yeah. Why not French? Um, and and yeah, so the Ethereum friends, the Ethereum Foundation reached out to say that um, um, a Chinese company, LinkTime, wanted to organize a conference in France, and they were looking for a partner there. And so EdCon, the first edition in Paris, was uh, organized by uh, Assets, yep. the former name of uh, Ethereum France. Uh, so that was our first iteration at the doing a conference. And uh, right after this, we felt like well, let's do a conference every year in France because it's uh, it's so cool. It brings everybody in France and it allows us to uh, make the ecosystem grow, put Paris on the map for the blockchain world. Uh, and we really enjoyed uh, organizing EdCon, so <coughs> we decided to start EdCC, first edition in 2017 and then 2018, uh, 2019, and now 2020. Uh, we did the conference at a school initially. Yeah, um, the CNAM. Which wasn't really uh, uh, proportionate for an event that big uh, with uh, rooms everywhere it uh, it looked a little bit bootstrapped which was which was cool yeah it it, uh, it, it, it played to the kind of like community uh, vibe of exactly. VTC yeah exactly and people showing up and uh, just um, hanging around um, but yeah. unfortunately this year the the school was in uh, renovation work so oh, we couldn't have it unfortunately um, you know, I think it, it Sonny was was telling me that he actually liked the Knam because of this kind of very community vibe and yeah. everything. Yeah, and it's it's next to a museum for technology and and techniques, uh, science, uh, where you can have uh, where you can see the first plane that crossed the channel. Yeah, uh, where you can see uh, various uh, instrument to measure uh, pressure and and also scientific instruments. So it it felt kind of cool, right? Yeah. But we wanted to continue the growth of the event. So the first edition, we had roughly 800 people, then 1, and, well, 1,200. And this year, we were expecting 1,600. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to keep it growing. And one of the way we could keep it growing is changing the venue to something bigger. Yeah, but we weren't expected expecting the the coronavirus, uh, obviously. But yeah, but I mean, it, turnout was pretty good still. Like it, it's yeah, nine hundred people. So I think. Our, yeah. our position at the, with this conference as a nonprofit is that we we take all the the 
the expense that we uh, we think we're gonna handle and we divide by the number of people that we expect to show and we fix a price so it's a 300 euro and you have a three days of conference uh, and we publish our book so you know that we are not making money or a little bit of money that we reinvest to other community conference or community event or research initiatives um, and and we want to make sure that we have a conference where we are at a human level so yeah. having one force or one person out of four is a is a is a speaker um, it allows to for people to interact very easily with all the speakers um, and this year we had a uh, roughly 250 speakers that were on the lineup 10% uh, of also um, didn't show up yeah. because of the, the virus or complication to travel um, but we still managed to have pretty much everyone on a video conference so the people that didn't come were able to, to show less um, and uh, and yeah and we live stream everything and we edit right away so <coughs> we produce a lot of content and we want HCC to be happening every year the first week of March so bookmark that in your agenda yeah first week of March every year um, in between different DevCons so we produce content and we keep the we keep keep the ball rolling. So y you mentioned that it's a nonprofit. Like people yeah. people should uh, also be aware that ECC is is run as a nonprofit conference. And you talked about the fact that the, you know the conference doesn't necessarily want to make money. We cannot actually. No, I mean, the, but I Ethereum Ethereum France can can have revenue, and then that revenue can fund yeah, you know right, right. other other conferences and things like that. Um, you know, is do you th do you think that you know that maybe the conference could make a little bit of money, and, and that money not, not it wouldn't be pocketed by anyone, but it would be in the association, and that would allow the right. association to do uh, to organize more events and have a little bit yeah. more flexibility in its so budget. So to clarify this, what uh, what I meant by say it cannot make money is that we uh, we cannot organize the event with a commercial uh, right stand yeah, as a nonprofit. Um, but eventually uh, we have more sponsors or we have more attendees than we expect and then we have a we have a positive delta at the yeah. end, uh, which happened last year which happened the year before and uh, we are transparent of what we do with the money the money goes to the the nonprofits and uh, what we use the money with is supposed to be aligned with our status sure. so our status is to promote the ecosystem and to promote the know-how of about blockchain and ethereum at large um, so what we did with the money the previous years is um, we we uh, gave a community sponsorship to the Swarm Summit. We gave community sponsorship to uh, DevCon, and we also gave community sponsorship to DevCon. So the reason why we sponsor DevCon is because we have a deal with the foundation that you know we, we get some tickets for our attendee for, for our members. And uh, as you may or may not know, uh, getting a ticket to DevCon is super complicated because there is so much hype around this conference. So people are spamming to get a ticket. So it allows us to, uh, you know, funnel volunteers to the That's foundation interesting. and so on. Um, and also what we do with the money, we created um, two uh, research awards. So one of them with uh, PSL, which is the, the Paris, uh, the Parisian uh, University's uh, initiative of research. Um, so we created a, an award for uh, the best paper in uh, blockchain and science. And we created another paper, another uh, award with uh, Imperial College. Um, it was uh, awarded last year also with uh, Mathematic and Blockchain. Um, so we, we used some of the money like this. And we also have some money in the bank. Uh, back in the days, we used to sell one beer for one ether when we first started our me meetups. <laughs> so that, that gave us a little <laughs> bit of treasury for our events. Yeah. Uh, um, and, uh, and when you want to book such an event, if it's the, 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 first play the first time you book the venue, they ask you for a deposit. So definitely this yeah, little bit of extra that, that we collected or the donation that we are, have from our members uh, allows us to, uh, to, to book the places. Sure. This place is not cheap. <laughs> this place is not cheap, yeah. but, you know, it's, uh, it's the right size for the venue. Sure. Uh, yeah, for, for it's the right venue for such an event. And uh, we, we, we started to plan for next year, and we will probably have the, the same venue next year, and, but this time the whole week, not just only three days. Okay. So I, I'd like to to get your your high level uh, view, of like where you see the ecosystem. Uh, you know, if we take a snapshot of what what the Ethereum ecosystem looks like right now, um, what are the kind of high level trends that 
uh, that you're seeing and that you're interested in? I, I would say we stand united. Like, uh, what does that mean? <laughs> that means that we everybody is looking towards Ethereum 2 and making it happen. And uh, the progress that we are uh, are seeing so far, uh, I mean, the last maybe since they have come, the progress has been tremendous. The the specs of the Ethereum 2 uh, protocol is now settled and uh, we, we see all of the people that are building, uh, all of the teams that are building um, uh, clients are converging towards uh, a multi-client testnet and getting ready for the next step. Uh, the the um, deposit for staking smart contract has been audited and is ready to be deployed. Uh, <coughs> at SEC, we had a we had a sneak peek at the staking interface. So we are united and and aiming towards uh, the delivery of Ethereum two. And um, when it comes to the ecosystem uh, at large, I mean pe what people are doing. Uh, what struck me is the level of maturity that we attained. I remember back in the days, like you have, uh, take Thomson Reuters used to host the best hackathons. So, I shout out to Thomson Reuters for 2017, 2016 hackathons that were super cool. Uh, back in the, those days, we were trying to deploy a smart contract. It was tremendously hard. Uh, <coughs> it wouldn't compile, or it would compile with the wrong ABI. It was super hard to deploy. Deploying an interface then and using uh, a website, what tools would you use to deploy your website? How would you connect your, your smart contract to the website? Oh, now you need to interact with wallets. How well would you connect with wallets? Now, we are really past those days. And when you look at what comes out of smart, of, of um, what comes out of hackathons, it's just mind blowing what people are able to achieve in such a short amount of time. Yeah. And it translates into like more robust, more mature products uh, for the B2C, um, uh, <coughs> more robust wallets. Uh, I mean, you, you've had many people on this podcast telling you about Argent, for example, is a wonderful wallet. Uh, Gnosis Safe is a wonderful wallet. Uh, we have meta transaction with various flavors right now. Um, and, and it translated to the enterprise space as well. I mean, Consensus UI and Microsoft announced the, the baseline protocol yesterday. Uh, and we had, had many talks at, at CC about enterprise and blockchain. I mean, the, the CTO of Ledger just uh, showed us uh, what we can do in terms of custody for a large amount of money and, and custody for uh, anyone that is getting into the custodial <laughs> business, actually. Mm -hmm. um, the Pegasus team has been showing everything that they can do to help uh, infrastructure the architecture of, uh, of uh, any uh, large scale enterprise project. Um, so we are definitely getting mature now. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Whenever, uh, whenever anyone wants to build a, a thing on Ethereum, he can do so, and he can do so properly in a short time. Because because the infrastructure is there, the developer yep. tools are there, the much more mature. So, um, uh, you know, bo bootstrapping a project and, and building out your your amazing yes. money Lego idea uh, is money is Lego or blockchain as a middleware. I mean, baseline protocol is a. Uh, uh, an interesting initiative to say that now you can take blockchain as a layer of reconciliation, a middleware between the different critical aspects of your of your business process, and have those business processes um, discuss with each other using the Ethereum mainnet. Um, so that's that's really exciting because that's an know, interesting idea. I, so I'm not, I'm not familiar with this. So baseline protocol is. Um, is an initiative between EY, uh, Microsoft, and Consensus to uh, build a set of tools that uh, enterprise can use to make their ERP or um, uh, financial processes discuss with each other uh, without uh, revealing much information, but using proofs that you uh, that you record on the Ethereum blockchain. And so you actually use the blockchain as a layer of reconciliation. I mean, I remember like uh, when you when we were trying to think about what Ethereum is going to be in the in the future years, back in the days, we were like maybe Ethereum is going to be a giant a giant central clearinghouse, yeah, like uh, being the the clearinghouse for all the the digital assets. Um, well, that's a way of using Ethereum as a clearinghouse. You just say like, well, you have an ERP, I have an ERP. We we have to make them discuss with each other. Uh, let's publish some uh, cryptographic proof on the blockchain and uh, give us. Uh, this as a reference. So it kind of flips the idea of, of a permission blockchain on its head. Yeah, right? Instead of building a permission blockchain with all these consortium members, let's just leverage uh, Ethereum as a middleware between us. Yeah, and, and that's that's not incompatible because <coughs> when you look at uh, scaling solutions that we came out uh, with 
for staining Ethereum were lots of flavors of uh, zero knowledge proofs and uh, interoperability can be achieved through zero knowledge proofs. So yeah. you can build your own blockchain on your side and at some point uh, make it communicate with the public blockchain. We had many talks about uh, um, swap between the different chains, atomic swaps, or how you build proper interoperability. And that goes along with those kind of, technic of, te of techniques. Um, so it's not flipping the idea, it's just <laughs> taking the same, uh, the same uh, going to the same place, but through a different direction. And with, with regards to, to DeFi, uh, I mean, one that's of the things the trend, that's right. uh, one of the big <laughs> trends at the moment, um, I had um, I had the guys from Ave in here uh, yeah. yesterday, and we we had a really interesting conversation about flash loans and all the implications that that has yeah. on the space. Um, give us a sense of where you see things going from this perspective, and are there any are there any things that you're more concerned about? Uh, wh what are you hopeful about, and what are you more concerned about? I, I hope we will break things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, an, an event host, an event host, is not a is not the good person to ask about it because, like, I've been running around uh, in circle over the last. Yeah, but you're days. in touch. You're in touch. So you know, yeah. You're in touch with the with but the ecosystem. building the agenda, I can tell you that we had uh, 40 or so uh, different talks on the DeFi track, so it was definitely the the biggest of all of our tracks. Um, so there's an appetite for DeFi, and there's many things happening. <coughs> but like one might say, well, you're playing with money Legos, and uh, it's difficult to envision your, the f your, your future house or your future manor or building a bridge out of small plastic bricks, right? Uh, but it shapes the way that we think about how we want to organize our money system, how we want to organize our our um, all financial instruments that we might want to interact with. I mean, uh, if we were in a scenario like, uh, well, I'm, I don't want to spoil uh, uh, Fight Club, but if at the end of Fight Club, things go south. Uh, if we want to, if we were about to re-engineer all the financial system, maybe the guy that I've played with Money Legos would be like, hey, maybe we should do it this way or that way, or I have some ideas to share. Um, so I'm very excited to see all the all the attention that the, the DeFi movement gets. Um, many problems to, to solve, uh, many many things that are related with the continuity of uh, the transactions, uh, the ordering of the transactions, or the volume that are involved with uh, the, the DeFi products. But that's definitely something new and something worth exploring. Uh, one of the things um, I'm the most excited for is the definitely Kong Cash. <laughs> when we had a, we had, I, I was, I was chasing the guy at Osaka, trying to get try to get some of the of the con cash that were distributed, and we were lucky enough to have him come uh, yesterday. Okay, so I, I have one of these at home I, that I picked <laughs> up in San Francisco. It's sitting somewhere, you know, in a pile of of, of uh, swag, <laughs> conference swag. Come on, uh, keep, keep, keep <laughs> that under uh, under the glass and, and and hang it in your in your apartment. Because why are you excited about this? So w one other thing that excites me the most <coughs> with blockchain is that it completely redefine the the very paradigm of ownership so instead of having a instead of having a, a central authority or a, a state saying you own this computer it's yours like we have a you have a, you have a proof of purchase it's yours it's your computer and if someone steals you this computer we can chase the guy and, and get the thing back uh, so being able to own things based on the private key that you've created yourself uh, that's something that's completely mind-blowing. And so Concash is a piece of paper uh, that has a small chip for entropy, a small chip for uh, hosting a private key, and another third small chip to uh, make the, the two discuss and also your smartphone discuss with the paper. Um, so when Concash is initialized, this paper create and store a private key. Uh, this private key is stored inside the chip, so there is no way to extract it and no way to recover the entropy that was used to create this uh, this private key. So what the Kongesh team does is that they they read the public key associated to this private key, and they create a smart contract that says this public key has 20 Kongesh. So you have a public key on a smart contract that says I have 20 Kongesh. There is a time lock that says nobody can redeem this 20 con cash until this date. 
And here you go. You have a piece of paper with a private key that can sign an, expir an expi uh, expiration date that says after October 2022, uh, you can redeem this uh, private key against the 20 con cash that was stored on the smart contract. And you have materialized the token, technically speaking. Yeah. So I can give you this at a conference and say, hey, it's worth 20 con cash. Yeah, but what am I going to do with it? Can I withdraw the token? No, but you can pass it on. So you can give it to me, I can give it to you, and I can give it to another person, to Alice, to Bob, to Carol, and so on. And whoever gets the con cash in October can say, yeah, I want to redeem. So you just burn the con cash. It's, it's not in the blockchain anymore. It has been transferred to your own private key, to your own private key, sorry. Um, and so looking at this and trying to explain blockchain to several people all the time, uh, suddenly you materialize everything on this sheet of paper mm. and for cash itself it might not be like a big revolution or something uh, like we, we, we've seen Bitcoin cash we've seen Lightning Network we've seen other applications so why, why even bother doing it on paper or you had paper wallet and so on well this time if you look at this on the perspective of creating a, um, financial instrument like a subscription bond Okay, maybe Epicenter is going to start a subscription bond. So you emit a bond saying like, uh, give me 1,000 DAI and I'm going to give you 1% per month on those 1,000 DAI and whenever I can reimburse. That's so cool. Now you give me this bond. I'm like, sure, like every month I'm going to tap it on my, on my uh, phone and uh, get those 1% back. Uh, and then if I want to get rid of this financial instrument, I'll give it to someone else. And this someone else could just tap it himself or herself and uh, get this one person every month. And if I forgot to redeem, I can redeem it twice. Yeah. That's great. And at some point, like we don't even need ZK snarks. We don't even need obfuscation. We just pass on this uh, limi limited uh, use uh, paper and uh, you can just end it like cash. So it's like bearer assets, but cryptographically proven and, uh, and, uh, and, and super cool. <laughs> So yeah, I was really, uh, that's one of the only talks I had uh, the, the chance to see so far. Um, I have, I, I mean, I haven't <laughs> seen any talks. Um, I think I'll spend uh, a couple of days watching the, so the, 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 the YouTube uh, <laughs> uh, videos. At the end of the conference, I get a hard drive with all the videos. And every time I travel, I'm like, oh, well, what <laughs> am I going to watch? <laughs> um, so I'd like to speak a little bit about the, the French ecosystem. Um, you know, we're, we're both... Uh, quite well connected in the in the uh, French uh, crypto ecosystem and h how do you feel the French ecosystem is um, is doing at the moment like you are you seeing like growth um, are, uh, and what are the what are the things that France is sort of s where France is excelling and maybe stands out um, you so know, compared to other other places so Apart from being the, the president of Ethereum France, I had, uh, had the chance to open the consensus office in Paris. And I, I can tell you one of the reasons why consensus decided to open an office in Paris is because we had access to a large pool of talents uh, that were available um, and super excited about blockchain. Um, I think if you are a blockchain startup, you should definitely consider France as a place to, uh, to settle. Um, because the regulation is there to be permissive and, and supportive and also because the engineers that are available are very talented they have a, a strong background in mathematics you know we do a prep school we have intense math that we select people at the uh, on the basis on at the engineer at the engineering school level um, so whenever those guys get into programming and they start to like uh, computer science and start to like development if you tell them like, well, we have some crypto and you need to, you need to at least a little bit understand how uh, EDSA works or, or how hash function works, they will be like, yeah, sure, like I can deep dive and I can, yeah. I can ramp up. They can hang. Yeah, and, and that's really something amazing. I mean, the, the Ethereum 2 research uh, at Pegasus is done by a couple of guys uh, that are uh, in at the, the office team. here. Yeah. Uh, the whole a lot of the things that uh, Pegasus is uh, building on the, the zero knowledge proof side is made in Paris as well. Uh, and uh, Pegasus orchestrates the, the solutions to send thousands and thousands of transactions and handle it in your private uh, blockchain is built by Paris guys. Um, so we had a, a tremendous amount of talents. 
and it also translates outside of consensus. Uh, you look at uh, Ledger, for example, is uh, one of the future uh, blockchain unicorns. It's uh, French technology. And I guess they had a, a competitive advantage at the beginning because so many good people were available in France and, and willing to work on this type of new technology. Um, and more, more so, we have a, a, an open source culture and uh, we have a peer-to-peer -peer culture as well. When you take uh, VLC, I'm pretty sure you use VLC for your uh, for your video. Uh, it's it's a French open source project from uh, Ecole Centrale. So, like it's uh, it's definitely something that uh, that I like about the, the French ecosystem. Uh, we have uh, tremendous talents and willingness to work. And and there's also like a strong um, a strong uh, uh, open source um, and like open software yep. history here as well. That Completely. I and think and is carrying over into the crypto space. Yeah, we t we tend to forget about this, but that's definitely here and here to help. And uh, yeah. and and also the the government has has realized that blockchain may be something very strategic for the future. So they should support it. And um, the 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 law that was passed on the custody of assets on the fact that you can write uh, a, a financial asset inside the blockchain um, that we are trying to define now uh, what it is to be a, a service provider on the blockchain uh, that's definitely going to help and um, I'm really excited to see this switch because back in 2015, 16, 17 uh, blockchain had a very bad press. Yeah. Like, yeah, and like the industry is starting to organize too. I mean, you know, we can talk about other associations uh, and like so Ladan, uh, yep. uh, the Association for the uh, Development of, of Digital Assets, uh, founded by Simon Perot, wi wi with whom I work. Um, yeah, the next step will be to create a syndicate. So like. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. So just briefly, briefly on Ladan. So Ladan is is uh, um, is the um, to put put it simply uh, uh, a lobbying association that represents. Uh, digital asset companies in France, and we work uh, alongside government regulators, um, other um, uh, other industries to try to advance, um, develop and yeah. advance the use of digital assets in in all aspects of society, and as a means to uh, digitize, uh, you know, finance, digitize and, and create an, like an open finance system. And so, um, you know, fr from that perspective, I think it's like it's a really good signal to see that. Well, one, the, the industry can um, f f federate, right? Like come Absolutely. around this, this, this idea. And I think it's a good signal also that, um, I mean, basically the entire industry is joining the, the association and supports the association. So there's alignment. There's like real alignment on because the issue. Because realize how important it is. <coughs> exactly. And yeah. so like the, uh, you know, uh, we were talking, I was talking with Bob Summerwell earlier about tribalism. Um, you know, a, a lot of people in this, well, not a lot, but like s s some, some people in the association maybe have opposing views on, on certain things when it comes to technology, when it comes to like design choices, uh, um, you know, crypto economics and things like that. But there are, we have found uh, alignment on so many other aspects like regulation and like, and, and one of the things that, that unites us and unites everybody, I think, in this association is the fact that we all agree that digital assets are the future. Um, public. Uh, blockchain, digital assets, crypto assets uh, are the future of finance, and like th that's th you know if everybody sort of aligns on that, uh, then the entire ecosystem uh, grows as a whole. And the next question will be like, how do you make sure that uh, the France and Europe and and the ecosystem at large has the the best regulation and the best uh, the best situation to continue to grow? And I uh, I'd suggested to 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 Simon Polro to. Uh, look at how it can become a syndicate because when you want to employ someone to work for your blockchain company you have to uh, apply to this new employee a convention and right now the convention that is used by all the technical the tech companies in france is the convention for the consultants so yeah. you are a consultant Sintec. you are Santec. you are the consultants so let's not go into the details but simply to if if ladan was to become a syndicate uh, in the future it will be able to create the convention adam the adam convention Say yeah. like, okay, I want to employ someone, but I want to employ someone on terms that fits the industry. Yeah. So if you want to employ someone to be a train driver, there is a specific convention for this that covers the fact that train drivers are exposed to those risks and uh, want to have, for example, free tickets for the train. And I, I want to have the same opportunity as a blockchain employee, be able to say like, well, we want to be remote first uh, and I want to pay you in crypto. Um, so that has to come with the convention and we don't have the convention yet. And I, I think that could be even, even greater for France because you will be able to say like, well, all of those tech companies 
uh, they need a new convention. It turns out that the blockchain guys, actually, they figure out how to do it, and this is something that everybody can use. And at some point, they will look at blockchain and feel, well, this is the future. This and is the convention will be on the blockchain. <laughs> oh, of course. Like, well, why not? Um, so the, the French ecosystem itself is rather uh, small compared to France, but it's still something that's really important uh, compared to the rest of the blockchain ecosystem, I think. Um, I would say that roughly uh, 500 to 600 people are working full-time on blockchain in France, um, which is little in the same time pretty big. Um, and it has been a pleasure to see it grow and to see it attain such a, such a level. And what's uh, really changed in the last year is, is of course, the, the lack of ICOs and the switch to uh, um, the legacy funding like VCs. Uh, and and uh, specifically at, at CC, we have the VC track. Yeah. Uh, and, and to see the VCs getting interested and giving good feedback and giving um, good good consulting to, to, the, uh, to the entrepreneurs is really something that's going to lead us to the, to the next step where we're going to see very successful startups come out of the ecosystem. Great. Thank you very much, Jerome. Thank you for having me. And so to thank you for coming to, to HCC, and I hope you had a very good time and you enjoy your booth. Yeah. Um, um, uh, I want to be here at this exact place with the same booth next year. Okay. <laughs> so the booth has already been purchased, so you can reuse it. It's not it. purchased. It's <laughs> rented. Okay. But I think I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell them to keep the plexiglass because I'll probably need it next year. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks.